Welcome back to the Be About It podcast. If this is your first time tuning in, hello, I'm your host, Matthew Daniel. This podcast is about how people put in the hard work and action every single day to achieve their goals. Today, I'm joined by Jacob Gomez, an independent filmmaker that's been in the business for two years now. He's created his own business and brand called The Cinematic Diaries, which film weddings, events, and sponsors for other businesses. In today's podcast, we talked about some of the difficulties of starting a business, what is really required, how to find clients, and sometimes the benefits of doing work for free. Hope you guys all did enjoy my talk with Jacob Gomez. Sick d- doing this shit. That's so sick. Yeah. How are you doing today? Dude, I'm I'm stoked. I'm 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 here in the in the studio. <laughs> You're here in the studio. Yeah, no, this is a nice little setup that you got going on. Thanks, man. And I like the I like the vibe. It's very 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 like homey, you know what I mean? Yeah. But also like in a professional way, if that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. I get you. Yeah. No. Thanks for asking me to come. No. Of you want to do like so tell me more about before we start like what do you like tell me what you want to do like specifically like i know you want to so specifically i want to just start making video uh like a business to business plan for uh, making videos of promotion videos weddings real estate try to like make uh, videos for other clients so they can like use it for their own promotion or if they want to like again like a wedding or like event videos I want to be able to film those and then another like side hustle underneath that is i want to like do consultant work yeah for like youtubers and like be able to like uh, give them a tips advice how to grow social media platforms right. and how to do that that's my plan right now very cool yeah what made you want to do that um growing up i've been such like a creative person like, obviously you can see my entire studio is like filled with music right and i've been like spending a lot of time but like once i started like videos and video production i just have like i want to be able to like do something creatively for a living but at the same time i don't want to have to work for someone else in a sense right where it's like all right i can talk to clients figure out what they want and then like have this sort of creative freedom in such a sense like being yeah. able to like hit the checklist on like oh i'll film this this and this for you but then it's like i'm still able to edit it and make it like very your your own, your own style yeah no that was definitely something that was appealing to me like i had two like normal jobs i guess you could call them and i just wasn't like i just wasn't happy i just like didn't it's just not i mean really realistically no one likes those jobs right oh yeah true. but i was just like i this is not for me. I'm not okay doing this and I'm not okay. Like having someone else like dictate like what I'm supposed to do. You know what I mean? Yeah, I got you. And then I didn't even know, like I was, I didn't even know like video was an option cause I just had kind of got into it like towards the end of high school. And, um, I'm like two, two and a half years out of high school right now, Mm. but so you're like 20, 21. Yeah, I'm 20. So, um, yeah, but once I got out of high school, then I got my first wedding and I was like, oh, this can like make money. I can make money. off. Yeah. Like serious money too. You know, like working like is a, your full time just making videos now. Yeah. Yeah. So like I'll like I try and make it my full time. Obviously, mm. there's still like the struggle of being freelance and everything. Yeah. But more so than ever, like it's becoming a reality and it's continually growing. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's not. Yeah, it's going it's going in the right direction, but obviously there's still room for improvement, you know. So you started the company, the Cinematic Diaries, with two of your friends. Yeah. What was the process and how did you get that started? So <laughs> I actually just recently started that company. Like I slapping that title on there. And the reason I did it, um, the reason I started the company was just for consistency because mm-hmm. I was like, I can't just have Jacob Gomez videos on, you know, all these wedding films because that's not... Yeah, it's fine, but it's not that professional, I guess you could say. So I just started that for consistency and I recently started that. Um, But I've been doing the wedding videos since like out of high school. And the Cinematic Diaries was supposed to be something that was like for essentially it was just for like more professional work. So essentially if like this is the process that I thought, like if the the bride was like going to her dad, it was going to pay for the wedding. And she was like, oh, it's Jacob Gomez's company. And he'd be like, who's that? You know what I mean? Mm. But if she's like, oh, it's the Cinematic Diaries, then he's going to be like, oh, sounds legit. Go to the website. Looks legit. All that stuff. You know what I mean? So the the name is really just to make it more legitimate. 
they have like a professional look. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And right. then how do you like get partnered up with your two friends, Zay and Zay and uh, who else do you, are you referring to? I'm trying to remember what's off the of Cinematic Diaries. Um, Gavin's on there. Gavin, is yeah. Gavin on there? Well, yeah, at least so. Well, so Zay and Gavin are my former friends who like taught me everything. Mm-hmm. So they they well they taught me everything, and now whenever I have jobs, I just bring them on because like I know they're great. And then I also randomly. Um, partnered with a photographer I was out shooting in the water just this is like the power of chance or like coincidence or whatever I literally was out shooting in at Beacons in Encinitas and this guy was like hey what camera is in that housing and I was like oh it's the Sony and he was like oh no way and we just started chatting and he ended up being like a super legit photographer um, who was living in Encinitas and he had his he has a studio on um, 101 and like an art gallery and all that stuff so and we became friends so he's like my main photographer now Mm. and obviously like so we go out to weddings yeah so like if someone emails me about a wedding and it's like photo and video then i'll be bringing him first Mm. choice and same thing with him if he gets a wedding that's like video and photo he's the photo guy so he'll bring me for video right because he specializes in photos and he's right yeah exactly i can do both but i definitely prefer um video videos yeah sorry if i'm like moving back and forth you're all good no you're all good i can adjust as we go okay cool uh one of my first questions is what is the uh what is one of the biggest difficulties or issues you received along the road like finding clients dude just consistency like literally i got my first wedding and it was because i did a dance studio promo for the mom of the daughter who was getting married and um the dance studio promo was terrible. <laughs> like I go back okay. and I, I mean, it's like cute, but I go back and I'm like, this is absolutely terrible. I hate myself. Like, <laughs> and like you're like, this doesn't even look professional. Right. Like I want to go back and like make it good, honestly. But um, no, that's kind of what started it. Like uh, she, she just didn't really have an idea of like what a good videographer was, I guess. And she, um, she just said, uh, Hey, can you film my wedding? And I was like, sure. And she was like, I'll like, is a thousand good? And I was like, sure and i was like super stoked on the inside because i was like never you know i'd be, been receiving like 200 dollars a paycheck mm-hmm. for like every two weeks at my job you know what how I mean? do you look at that now when you're like for a wedding how much would you look at like to charge a thousand well uh, comparing it to that or well, compare like to like now comparing it to like now it's like i you mean look at a wedding like how much are you like all right this is how much i'm gonna charge for it well like i have a kind of rough pricing sheet um, and it, it really varies. I'm testing the waters right now because mm-hmm. I, I recently like hiked up my prices to try and, cause I'm trying to break into like more of a premium market Yeah. and m- more people are saying no and more people are, aren't getting back to me because the prices are high. So I'm actually, it's finding that like balance. I think a thousand is typically pretty low Yeah. and then the highest I would, pr- I would feel comfortable charging is like 4,000, um, be, because but that's like premium, you know what I mean? Like maybe a travel. Because you can't do like four weddings a weekend. Right, right, exactly. And and sorry, I, I was totally straying. But coming back, the biggest thing was like consistency in the beginning. Like I got that first wedding and then it was like no weddings for like eight months. And do you reach out to people now or do they reach out to you? It's mostly they reach out to me. I've only ran one ad ever um, and I don't really feel like I need to. The beautiful thing about wedding videos is they market themselves true so it's like you put them up and then people see them and they're like stoked like oh my gosh i want this company or whatever right um but something that i think is kind of cool is i actually did a free wedding Mm -hmm. and it was my uncle and um aunt and they're really good looking and they uh they're young and it was in cabo and i was already going with like my whole family and i told my friend zay i was like yo dude come and like hang like let's film this thing and seriously we're gonna get we're gonna not gonna get paid anything but let's just film it and like use it and for zay that video has gotten him like i think it has like two hundred fifty thousand views for him so mm-hmm. that's gotten him like all his business and then for me the video has like i think like seven thousand views on youtube and the the retention rate is like all the way through so people are super stoked on that video and like I didn't get paid at all, but in a way, it's my biggest money maker because people see that and yeah. they're like, "Oh my gosh, I want my video to be like this," even though I didn't get paid for it, <laughs> which is crazy because it's like, 
a lot of people will say no to free work, but sometimes that's what you have to do. You know what I mean? It's, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's kind of crazy when you look it's like back. when you're doing free work, it's like not just like it's something that will like help you in the long run because it's like, all right, now here's an example of something I can do. It's right. like when you do like a thousand dollar project, you make it look like two thousand dollars. Right. Yeah. And so, yeah, no, that's totally true. Like I actually before this, I was meeting with a sorority girl um, because I'm filming their recruitment video and I'm mm-hmm. getting paid a thousand to do that. And I don't not going to lie. I don't really want to do it because it's a sorority video and it's a lot of commitment and it's just not something that is very, I don't know. I guess it's just not really my style, Mm. but I said yes, obviously. And I'm going to do my best at it because my thought process was like, okay, I'm not getting paid a ton for this, but all these girls who are in this sorority are definitely going to get married in, you know, three to 10 years and who are they going to hit up if I'm, like, super chill and, you know, someone that is, like, rad around them? And you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I think free work, there's, like, a, a, a like you just kind of have to gauge, like, what your what the value is. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I so, on talking on technical terms, then, what is, like, some of the licenses required to be a independent filmmaker or, or videographer? So, honestly... Um, this was something that I was really concerned about in the beginning because I was like, what's all the legal issues? What's all the like technical aspects of it? And I actually, my parents have an accountant, obviously, like does their taxes and everything. And I went to my parents' accountant and I was like, how do I get this set up? How do I do like blah, blah, blah. Like I want to get this rolling. And he literally said to me, and he's like a smart Jewish man. So he's like, yeah, he's he's totally awesome. And um, he literally was like, dude, don't, don't worry about it. And, like, you may hear that, and, like, someone may hear that and be like, what? But, like, you don't have to worry about it for a certain amount of time. And I actually was so concerned in setting up my LLC or C Corp, and I was like, I need to get this done. I need to get this done. But he literally said, dude, you're going to be essentially, like, taking it up the you-know-what in taxes, all this stuff. Like, don't worry about it. Get the ball rolling and then do it. And... Honestly, my ball is still rolling. So I tried to be, like, fully legitimate to just, like, go, like, just to start. But essentially, it's, like, I'm, I am i don't work a ton, and I'm just someone who's trying to make this a full career. So this is kind of just, like, my start. Mm. And, I mean, I'm really just going to kind of tackle this once I get into, like, the bigger numbers of, you know, what I'm doing. And then I'll make it legitimate, obviously. Um, but... Yeah, that was some advice that I got that I was, like, kind of skeptical about. Um, but honestly, like, I think it's right. So you're not, like, too worried about the licenses? I or mean, like not ri- I mean, unless the – not for weddings either. The, the biggest thing I would be worried about is the song, like, if I yeah. use, like, copyright music. But it's a personal video for them, so it's, like, it's not an ad. You know what I mean? Mm. So – it's their video if they Compared want. Compared to like when you do the boxing. Right. Yeah. So that's a challenge. So sometimes, so like if, if I am doing a wedding and they want a copyright song, not a big deal. It doesn't really matter. It's whatever. Um, but if it's like an ad, like I work a lot with a hot yoga studio and um, they, I'm doing 10 ads for them. And um, we actually just purchased like a music licensing, like a, it's called music bed. So we have like free or like copyright music or free or copyright free music that we can Mm. use because obviously they don't want to get dinged because they're going to be running those ads. Same thing with like the kickboxing place and stuff like that. And if they're like dead set on a song or whatever, then obviously my job is just to make a video that they're stoked about. And then, I mean, the tail end of it is like, they'll deal with what they have to deal with. If they don't run the ad with the song in it, then I mean, I think that's kind of the loop. Like, it's okay. It's just their video. But if they're pushing it, I think there's an issue there. But obviously, that's happening on their end. So it's, I mean, I just try and make the best thing for everyone and try and make everyone's like vision like happen. So, and I try and do it in like the, the best way, like so they don't face any issues or like. So if you're not like too worried about the licenses, then do you meet up with like clients beforehand and like set up like a contract? Yeah. To, like make sure you pretty much just cover your ass. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I have a contract, and essentially, it's super fair. It just says, I mean, like, I'll just talk about like my wedding one. Like, if I can't show up, like, I'll get someone to show up. If I don't, if I just completely bail, I owe you everything back, like all the money, mm-hmm. right? 
um, which obviously has never happened. Do you do a 50-50 where they pay 50 up front? And yeah, then you I do. Give, that's, okay. Yeah, that's like the biggest, that's like the best thing, man. Deposits are the, are the shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so yeah, they it's 50-50. And um, then with that deposit, I'll book like uh, my second shooter if there is one, mm. if they went with that package and um, like all that stuff. And but yeah, so I mean the contract is pretty basic. I are I'll have it also to like look legitimate because you know I definitely want to make sure they're feeling comfortable and make sure that they can't take advantage of me and you know vice versa. Obviously, which would never happen, but you know everything in writing is better. <laughs> so like w- when so do you like meet them face to face? Right. Yeah. Oh, uh, sometimes. Like when and where? If they want to, like honestly, Starbucks or Starbucks or yeah, cafe st- places. Right. Like sometimes people will want to meet, and sometimes people like don't, and it's okay. Like if they're comfortable with just having a phone call with you, um, I mean that's fine for me. But I'm willing to do anything just to make them feel comfortable. That's the biggest thing for me. I just want them to be like chill. You know what I mean? Chill. To be like trusting you to right. like with the product yeah. with money. Yeah. So obviously if they if they want to, then of course I'll meet them. But um if they're if they're uh just hey, we just want to do a phone call and we'll meet you on the wedding day, then that's totally cool. So next question is um how do you decide what you are charging someone then? So I mean, as it's gone as since the first wedding that I've done, I've like steadily increased my prices. Um not that much um and but like typically i'll kind of like gauge the things that like i want to do like the projects that i do want to want to do so like this 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 is going to sound terrible but if i know it's a couple that will help me in my um portfolio mm. like it's a good venue or it's a good venue good location good looking, good looking couple probably. right I might, God, I hope no couples listen to this. Uh, <laughs> I might charge them like a little bit under or like be more like lenient and like be, cause because I want to like do it, right? What they can offer you is like a ton of business because right. of how great it looks. Right, right, yeah. So I, so like I just had someone reach out to me and they, they knew someone that I know. So I'm going to give them like a discount um, and I'm going to make sure like they want to book me because... So it's like a case by case. Yeah, it really is. And that's not like I'm ugly people i'm like no, I'm not, no, no like no. i'm not like i'm not i'm overcharging ugly people or whatever like i'm not saying that at all i'm just saying like it's mostly like the venue and the mm. place because that will really make it um like if it's i live in temecula if it's somewhere in temecula like a winery that's a little bit more standard so i might just charge like my normal pricing versus like when i went up to canada um and did the wedding up there like me and my buddy Zay, we didn't, we barely got paid anything. Like we got everything covered, so we didn't lose any money. But again, like we, I think it was like five hundred that we split. So we really didn't, we didn't like, we didn't make a ton. Mm-hmm. But again, that's one of my best weddings, um, and I don't even know how many other weddings it's gonna get me or has gotten me already. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it's just case by case. I think that once I am fully legitimate, you know, mid-20s, and I figure out, like, exactly what I want to do, like, how this business is supposed to go and everything, then I'll, like, sit into that a little bit more, like, uh, I guess, you know, be set in that a little bit more, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you got your flight covered for that wedding? Yeah. That's so, pretty dope. Have yeah. you gotten like any companies to like let you travel? Because like you travel a bunch. Uh, yeah, I did. I traveled like four months last year. So it was really cool. So was that like all out of pocket or was that? A lot of it was. Um, a month of it was with my family. So that was cool. We went to the Caribbean. But other than that, um, it was out of my pocket. It really doesn't take that much to travel. Like people think it does. But I mean, if you really like rough it, you can get by. Like I went to Hawaii a year ago with literally two hundred dollars in my bank account, and I was fine. I like obviously after I bought my um, ticket there and back. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I went there and I just spent like literally twenty dollars a day on food, and I didn't like limit myself, and I or I and I limited myself, and I just stayed with a friend who let me crash on their couch and mm-hmm. just caught the bus around, which was like a dollar a day, or got a ride with people you know what i mean yeah so it's not that hard like you just kind of have to put yourself out there and um i mean it's it's i think people are scared of that kind of stuff but how much you want to travel this year then 
Um, that's a good question. I don't really know. Right now, I only have two trips planned. So I'm going to Kauai, and then I'm going to Israel. Oh, um, that's dope. So Israel is, uh, and I'm not even really paying anything for Israel because I'm um, part Jewish. Like, I have Jewish heritage. Mm. So I'm going on my birthright trip. So Oh, that's so freaking th- sick. Yeah, so they, like, like, pay for you to do that which is cool. So it's like, you just have to pay for like your food and stuff like that. So that's kind of cool. Like, obviously, you know, I don't know what percentage of people like listening to this are Jewish or whatever, yeah. but like, if you're Jewish, then like take advantage of that. You know what I mean? So like, or like, yeah, let's go to Israel. Yeah, exactly. Like I'm going with my girlfriend who also happens to be part Jewish. <laughs> like, um, or like if you have a friend or like you met someone and like they live in, a, live on Oahu, like, just say, hey, dude, can I crash at your place for literally five days? And then, like, the odds of them saying no are, I mean, obviously, it's relationship to relationship, but, um, it, like, the odds of them saying no are, if they're cool, are probably, like, pretty low, and they'll probably just be like, yeah, just come crash, I gotta do my stuff, you can just hang around, and then just, like, go to the beach all day, like, that's what I did a lot of the time, just went to the beach. That's freaking dope. Yeah, went to, yeah, but Canada was sick, yeah, we got everything paid for, and then, um, um, we made like 250 bucks each, which is there any other like places that you did for business wise that let you travel? Um, uh, there's this company called ritual energy who I don't work with anymore. Um, mm-hmm. they gave me like $500 when I went to Hawaii to put towards my Hawaii trip. Um, which was just to like, cause I was shooting a promo video for mm-hmm. them out there. So obviously that didn't cover everything. Obviously I think that covered like the flight. Um, but that was cool because I was just out there like shooting for their company and their brand. Um, and then other than that, I can't really think of anything. But yeah, I, I'm kind of straying away less, going away from social media in a way. Um, like still doing my thing, but like social media, it's like so oversaturated and like, yeah. there's, I don't think it's possible. Well, I, I bet it is, but it's super unlikely that like you blow up now versus like someone would blow up like, three or four years ago. You know what I mean? Yeah, because the platform is just so filled with right. so many creators Everybody, doing the exact same thing. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Everybody wants to be Sam Colder. And yeah, um, yeah, it's not like it's not realistic. So I'm just kind of doing my thing and just trying to be happy. I mean, time. I did see a video on your channel, though. Which one? Uh, with Tanner Fox. Oh, yeah. How would you get yourself in that situation? Uh, my friend Zay is Tanner Fox's filmer. So okay, that's freaking dope. Yeah, so I just went over there, and sometimes I'll go over there and just hang out. I obviously don't want to be intrusive. No, um, yeah. And like, so I try not to like film or anything because I don't want anyone thinking like I'm exploiting them for views or whatever. Yeah. Um, and I try not. It's to, like, like they're actual friends. Yeah. Well, yeah. Like we're just chill. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know who else. I, I mean, I edit for not like no one knows this. I edit for this girl named Tessa Netting and she's a YouTuber. She has like 500k and she does like Harry Potter videos. But like I try not to flex that stuff because it's like you don't need to. You know yeah. what I mean? I'm just kind of, I'm stoked doing it so it's like that's enough. You know what I mean? I mean you love doing it so it's not exactly, like yeah. you're gonna care. Right, yeah, exactly. It's just it's the best job in the world when you're able to work for yourself and like do what you want which is sick, you know? Do you think you have a chance on YouTube? Maybe I mean like I'm so inconsistent, so I don't know. Like I try and post every week. I didn't post this week though because I was busy with. Uh, I'm doing like you a did yo- your studio. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I did my little room, my room. I like re- I there's I like just bought a TV. I put a TV in there, um, but yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe like if I really try, I think there's possible. I think like if you know I do things that are more appealing, like lens reviews or like like gear gear stuff people like love how to right how to videos tutorials all those people love that stuff and that stuff is like more appealing obviously i'm just not it's as so stoked. oversaturated yeah, yeah it yeah, gets yeah. so boring to film right yeah you, i can only look at myself for so long i'm pretty ugly <laughs> no, I'm <kidding. laughs> nah, man. Um, but yeah no like uh, i can only do that for so long but that's the, like i feel like if i tried like and put my all in it you can mm. i can make it work I just don't really like. What do you think is like what's next then? Because like everything's so oversaturated with like how to tutorials, doing all this. What do you think's next on YouTube in that sense where it's like this is going to be the next big like hop on the train to get popular? Right. I mean, camera wise, I don't know. I feel like I, ju- I got into camera gear and stuff like that right at the end of like the prime era. Mm-hmm. And 
now it's just like everyone and their mom trying to film everything trying to do cliff jumping videos and like that's not cool like it's st- it's cool if you think it's cool yeah you know what i mean i mean in one video you said like the travel niche is pretty much dead it, it kind of is i mean like it's almost like i don't want to like i'm going to Ka- Kauai with my girlfriend i almost like don't know if i should like make i'm obviously i'm gonna make videos but it's like how many Kauai cinematic videos are on youtube right now and, and they probably all look the same you know what i mean yeah so i mean i just think it has to be like personality that sells it and like yourself and right now i don't really put out a ton like that great on camera you know what i mean yeah um so that's something you're working towards then yeah definitely definitely but i don't know what's next that's a big question i wish i knew because i'd jump on it right now (laughs) Um, yeah but but i mean i think continuing to innovate and like just developing your style as everyone develops their stuff like just trying not to be like anyone else exactly Mm -hmm. you know what i mean someone who really inspires me is rory kramer i don't know if you know who that is Mm -hmm. um he's like this filmmaker and um at the beginning I was like totally copying him and then I was like dude this is so lame like don't and like same thing with everybody who was doing like the zoom in and out transitions and like the yep. fades and all that stuff like everyone copying Casey Neistat Peter yeah everyone, McKinnon. Right, right 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 yeah uh, like you can't do that like they're them and the only way you're gonna blow up is he be like you pin yourself into the position right and being unique yeah I mean and the like d- I'm speaking not even from a place where I'm like confident in like where I am. Like I think I'm towards finding my style. Like I think I'm closer than I have ever been, but uh, I mean, it's, it's just a challenge. You're always searching for like what, who you're supposed to be. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I wish I knew the answer. That (laughs) That would be cool. Um, but yeah. Back to like some of the filmmaking on part of the cinematic diaries. When you first started out, what were some of the unexpected costs? Costs? Yeah, were like that required that you weren't like expecting that it needed to be done. I mean, obviously gear is just expensive. Yeah. But other than that, do you that, rent out gear then? No, I try not to. I try and buy everything in cash too, so I try not to do anything on credit because I know a lot of people that have just buried themselves in debt, and that's not good. But I mean, really, um, costs. I think like insurance was a big one for me because i have insurance obviously mm-hmm. i need that for Camera venues insurance. and stuff yeah and for and i mean just like my monthly like i didn't want to spend a hundred dollars on dropbox cause yeah. for the year um so that's something like that i was like this is so lame i don't even so just little things like that because obviously like the camera gear i get i'll use personally too yeah so i mean i want that stuff i guess it's just the like nuance like drone insurance right (laughs) yeah like and just giving the venues like your insurance and stuff like that and then like um i mean honestly i'm trying to think off the top of my head like shipping packages to people or like hiring people out that's a big one like if you want like my friend zay he he obviously is uh like doing his thing he's pretty successful in what he does so if like i want him to come second shoot at a wedding like it's 500 bucks and like that's the most that anyone charges me um but he obviously has quality so yeah i like want to bring him um but like that's a pretty big expense if you like if you're paying your filmer because like there's a package where it's just me and then the up and then the package up from that is me and someone else so two filmmakers and i don't make any profit off that it's literally just to cover bringing on the second filmmaker Mm -hmm. so it's just little things like that honestly but yeah yeah sorry no you're good went away from mike (laughs) um yeah i mean i can't really think of anything else if you love it like like the whole process is like wonderful you know what i mean so it's Mm -hmm. not there's not too much where i'm like this is i don't want to be doing you know what i mean like i try not to complain because i'm so lucky i see my friends who are like working at like restaurants and stuff like that and like, I'm so lucky that I don't have to. You know what I mean? I can you do it. You get to just do video filmmaking, right. editing. I'm so lucky, yeah. that's So I've always tried and bring that perspective into do it. Do you live like, at home or do you have your own place? I live at home. I was really kind of um, wanting to be in my own place, but then I was like, why would I spend that money if I can, like, spend it on traveling? <laughs> oh, he's, like, hanging out. He's, like, saying hi. Is in a second or no? I, it should. <laughs> hey, buddy. <laughs> it's cool. I have my two. dog's, like... 
for everyone that's listening. My dogs just decided at to the door. Same at the door, just like yo. I have dogs, so they're they're, they're inherently I have curious. Five. <laughs> hey. He's like the mean one. Oh, he is. Yeah. Oh. All my other dogs are like super nice. Oh, they are. Okay, now he's out. Yeah, he's he's uninterested. That's funny. But that's yeah, sick. yeah. But um. Close to wrapping up now. Yeah, I mean, um, is there anything else or not? Or uh, I mean, just my last thing is like, so I own I own the brand. This podcast is called Be About It. It's a brand that I own. It's a message telling people to work hard and push their goals and dreams. Like I even have my own shirt oh, plug cool. right now be about it. don't talk about it be about it if you can leave anyone advice what's your like your last like what's your last minute advice you can give people so i um i do n- like no one knows this because it's kind of embarrassing or it's not embarrassing there's just a negative stigma about it but i do yoga i've done yoga for like four years and right now i'm actually in teacher training <coughs> to like be a yoga teacher like all teach right it. that's dope and i love yoga so much because it's like actually helped me like my anger issues and physically it's helped me and everything and the biggest thing that i try and like bring into like my life and like trying to bring into other people's life is just to be like mindful that we are our own enemies like we're the only people holding ourselves back obviously in sp- like special cases like financial issues and you know circumstances like that like obviously that's different but towards your dreams th- and goals yeah yeah but a-, a lot of the times it's like we're the ones holding ourselves back. Like, if you want to be a filmmaker, like, go out and make films. Like, it's not that hard. Like, iPhones film awesome quality nowadays. You really, like, the law of return is, like, the law of diminishing return is, like, getting even more relevant, like, with, like, an iPhone 10 and that can film, like, 4K60. And then there's, like, a camera that's $5,000 that films 4K60. And it's, like, you can do what you want. You just have to go do it. Like, yeah. like I like I like that. Like, be about it. Like, it's just like go do it like just stop talking about it and just go do it like um, i just i just decided i'm gonna go to hawaii and then like i made some of my best friends like out in hawaii and i just because i just did it so just like i guess my biggest piece of advice is just like know you're your own enemy and like a lot of the times you're holding yourself back for whatever reason that is so just like try not try (laughs) sorry just do it just literally go out and do it and a lot of the times you'll find that like that little risk will will be something that like allows for there to be a change and like there to be like a an opportunity for for you to grow yeah sweet thanks for joining me jacob and let's roll the outro thanks man i hope you guys all did enjoy this week's episode of the be about it podcast and if you want to go see some of jacob's work on his youtube channel and with the cinematic diaries that is down in the show links hope you guys all did enjoy and i will see you next week on next week's episode of the be about podcast see ya